Welcome back to Tectonica. My name is Nilaus, and this is a, another showcase of a, a really, really cool feature that uh, we built here on the uh, on stream. This is the Bleacher Bus, and it is uh, basically an improved version of the main bus that uh, I built earlier because it didn't have it did have some problems and it did not scale sort of to the end game with everything. Well, end game in this early access version with everything that's available. But this bus is now taking care of every single item that you can imagine, and uh, it'll just uh, get that. So of course, it's a monumental task to build this but if you build it then uh, you don't have to worry about having any of the buildings any of the byproducts any of the finished products available because they're all going to be built here so in this episode on this video i will be showcasing how to do it how to do the branching how to do uh, uh, the setup and uh, just so you can get started and build this in your own base if you feel so inclined so if you enjoy this if you are and want to support the channel then consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel it helps a lot with visibility and it also encourages me to make more tectonic videos so with that let's dive in we're going to start by taking a look at the old bus and uh, talk a little bit about the limitations of uh, and the good and the bad stuff about this so basically i started by just having copper on one side and iron on one side and then just meet in the middle and then i sort of merged the iron and copper backwards uh, let's get those up. Uh, people have been asking in comments how you get the alternate view. You hit the alt key. Alt key disappears. Alt key appears. Cool. Um, and uh, so I brought iron and copper this way because all of these byproducts are just iron and copper. That's pretty simple. So we built it in here, just drag the lines in, and that populated the, the bus with all the other subcomponents that are iron and copper only. And then sort of uh, at that point, I sort of, or a little bit later, I started realizing, you know, you also need some uh, some processing units. You actually need some of these uh, fiber frames. You need some Kindlevine. Uh, you need some silver shiver thorns as well. And later on, you even need stuff like the cooling systems. And later, later, later on, you also need stuff all the way over here. That is, what is that? That is the processor units. On top of that, there's kind of a waterfall that prevents us from keep expanding it. So there is a natural limit. But let's talk about in general, like here is the main issue. First of all, I have to turn them sideways so that there is a opportunity. You can see this is exactly the problem. It can go, it has to go up and down again in order to branch off the bus. And that means you can't branch off right next to each other without going one level more level up. And I don't think that looks good. So that means it limits it. It gets a little bit difficult with stuff that has three inbound here. Uh, because you kind of need, you reserve quite a lot of space. Now, it's not really a problem if you only have it on one side, but if you also want it on the other side, it actually gets a little bit tricky. On top of that, um, it has a little bit of a, a problem that branching out from this location, if I wanted to do another branch here, then I have to here and then uh, here on top and then delete this one underneath and then build it on this side. That's, it's it's okay. But the, the main problem is also that it gets wider and wider and wider. And, well, I don't have the room for it here. But even if I did, then I'd really have to get... I, I think that there's like 20-something uh, products that you really need on the bus. And that's kind of a lot. So this didn't really work. It was uh, difficult to branch off. It was limited. It also had to be sort of sideways. I wanted something where I could take these locations here uh, and then turn them... Okay, that's not what I wanted. Turn them that way. Because then I, I could fit in way more. Uh, of course, it's going to be a little bit difficult with items that have three inputs. But if you're really being really honest about it, if uh, we look at it, there aren't that many that require three inputs. And the ones that have three inputs are usually one of the inputs is another of the, the building products. So this is one of the rare exceptions. Uh, this is another rare exception, even though it's actually accumulators as well. Here's a rare exception. Um, this one is just soil, so we don't really care. But these ones are sort of other products that are already built so it's um it's this is my uh, desire and i realized that if you built a sort of vertical bus um let's start making that here and okay it gets a little bit tricky to build it here that one and we keep branching this out so if i have stuff up here and we have the next one right next to it. And the next one down here. Then branching off is incredibly easy. Like it's literally just doing this. And then you've branched it off. Uh, it does get a little bit difficult because if I want to make this as 
18 or how many I need on a bus. I think, yeah, about 17, 18 is what I end up with. Then you need to make it like 18 tall. And that's kind of difficult, both getting up there and back down again. And it also takes a lot of space. So actually, I decided to sort of uh, look at it from the as a bleacher build where you just have uh, six tiers and then start a new one. Uh, this also has another few options or advantages because you can then actually get across it uh, instead of sort of climbing all the way up there. But, you know, it's up to you. You can also just do one big bleachers uh, build and uh, and then branch off from there if you, if you feel you have the height for it. Now that we've built the size of the bus, know how big it's going to be. It's six tiles high and uh, three rows of uh, bleachers. You can't see much from those from those uh, seats but hey who cares um then you have to decide what is an input and what is something you work with on here so let's go back to the start and then the, i have sort of looked at all the ingredients and sort of determined what are, what do i consider sort of raw inputs that you will have a separate factory that does as input so i think it's very natural that you have uh, iron and copper as inputs you make those in a smelter and then you bring it in somehow a uh, kindle vine I'm saying that as an input. It has a few uses. Uh, let me see how is the easiest way to do that. Um, here is one of the recent uh, things that, that we need the Kindle Vine for. And also accumulators. And accumulators are used for a lot of things. So that's just the fact that there are these two things that need Kindle Vine is, means that we, need, we should get it in here. And then Atlantum, once you have that, is also something that's going to be built somewhere and then just be brought in. Then I'm saying that I want the fiber frames because we actually need quite a lot of fiber frames. You can also say that f these fiber fr plant fiber frames and Kindle Vine are built in the same sort of thresher build setup. So I think this uh, makes sense and it's something I'm going to bring in. Then I'm bringing in not Shiverthorn extract, but actually the Shiverthorn coolant. I could bring in the extract, but um, the only reason you'd want to build the Shiverthorn extract or let's say if I bring in the Shiverthorn extract, then I have to build the Shiverthorn coolant as an intermediate here with the, a little bit of iron components and limestone. That means I need limestone available in large quantity and it means that I need, um, uh, need iron available as well. Or, well, I have iron available, but, and then I need Shiverthorn. The only th other thing that I have found that Shiverthorn is actually used for is here. So mining charge. And I really don't need to have uh, mining charges on the bus. It could be an option, but it's also up to you. But I've decided that I want to get the coolant on the bus because the coolant is used for a few things like Mark II belts and cooling systems. So that's uh, that's why I'm using that. And then I just don't care about mining charges. Uh, you basically just need a few mining charges. And once you have that, you never need any more. Now, I could have brought other things in here. I could have, instead of bending the plant fiber uh, frame, then I could have just brought the plant fiber in. If I did bring the plant fiber in, then I would be able to make uh, these lights. That's the only difference. But since, you know, I don't really care about those, so I'm going to skip a step and then only take the plant frame, matter frames in. Then the first thing that you do, once you do that, you can figure out where you want to put it on the bus. I've sort of decided to have one line with primarily iron stuff and then one line with primarily copper stuff and then one line with all the other crap that is not either iron or copper based. That's not really working entirely correct, but it's okay. And uh, then we just get started on uh, branching off. Let's get in here. So we get some iron stuff here. We get some copper stuff here. Then we get the mixed... Uh, the the what's it called they are called wires yeah a couple wires into the electronic components and then finally the mechanical components that use both iron and copper and then once we have all those they are just getting filled in onto the bus on various uh, empty lines and being able to sort of uh, get on with it then we have some of the more advanced stuff we have the processors i have you can see here that's the only thing that's bigger because processors are just absolutely atrocious they produce so slow so i uh, i did this but you know for the sake of making things look uh, neat and nice and consistent, then I, I think I'm actually going to take this out. Just, just so it looks like it's all synchronized like this. Cool. Now, look, it's all synchronized. It's all the same size. Then we get the cooling systems, which uses Shiverthorn, uh, as well as some other things. The cooling system goes out and then goes into the next one, which will be the processing units, which is kind of one of the things that uh, use a lot of the uh, advanced circuits. So the processing units also there. These I put here on, on this bus and then move further down. And then from here on, it's all about the buildings. And we're going to be showing you a few of the quirks and kinks of, uh, of this bus because it is a little bit uh, complicated. Now, when you have 
something as basic as this, two inputs, it's simply just dragging a line in and out. The way that it's done is that you can see here, if it's something that comes from the second row of bleachers or the third row of bleachers, then I just punch through this. If you look at the entirety of this, then I am actually just having one line underneath here. And I'm sure that if you look carefully, you can find a couple of teenagers making out between under the bleachers. I think so, but uh, don't haven't seen any just yet. When we, oh, I don't want to go there. Then we go over here and simply drag it off from the copper line. Uh, wasn't it copper wire I needed? Which one did I want? Oh, that's one here. So you can see Then I just drag it up here and the iron one, I drag it through and then simply go into the iron line as well. Very, very simple to branch off. And it's uh, it, the only thing is that you just need to sort of align it with here. Then you have some, uh, some other points like this where there are actually two inputs. Uh, next to each other, then you can combine it with just having a medium, a middle line, and then branching off to either side. Where it gets a little bit more difficult is when there are three inputs. Here is one example with three inputs. And uh, that needs to be solved. So it's not going to be moving very fast in this way because I'm only relying on longhand inserters and they are awfully slow. But this is a bus and you don't really need a lot. You This will just fill up and then if you need it, you go in here and pick up 50 of these. And then uh, you you just go about your business as as you like. But what I do here is that I take one in here. What you have to be really careful of is the rotation of these and how it makes splitters. For example, when I do this, then it breaks the splitters. Now it makes other splitters. It's just complicated. So this is a, is a good way of making it and also how to combine it with another one as well. Um, again, if I, for example, wanted to bring this further forward, then it would add another splitter, which is definitely not what I want. And so it's everything is just a little bit weird when it comes to trying to make three of these in. And the constraint is that you are forced to only use long-handed inserters, but it can be done. Here, for example, we have another uh, setup. Again, you're not going to be using like hundreds of, uh, of core composers, but uh, when you have them, it's nice to just come in and pick them up because they take forever to craft. And again, you can see that I branch it off from the side. I get another one in here, and I just be very careful not to get in a position where it invents a splitter. Here is a rare exception that is actually the accumulators. The accumulators here are a little bit annoying because uh, they really would like to be faster because you kind of need a lot of inputs for the accumulators 20 plus 20 and uh, those are simply only picked up by um, by the lines here. I wonder if I could actually do, no, I couldn't. I have to do it like this. And then if I do that one, does it merge into something? No, it doesn't, but it doesn't really matter. I can also put that here, then I can get twice as fast on this, but it doesn't really matter because it's now going to be constrained by the Kindle vine. Um, this is too slow and I'd like it to be faster. It's something that you could, if you want to break the symmetry, you can rotate it the other way so you can more easily get stuff in. Uh, or alternatively, you can just accept that it's slow and then just, uh, yeah, uh, wait for everything else to stack up. The problem is that accumulators are actually used for a couple of things that are in high use that we'll take a look at uh, in a little bit. But I put the accumulators back on the bus somewhere here, back on that bus, and then it branches in. And let's go back out here. And let's have a look at one of the places where accumulators are used. So accumulators are used for the voltage stepper. And the voltage stepper is a problem because the voltage stepper is used for Mark II. And this is kind of how I do it. So I do a Mark I assembler here but no output it just goes straight into a mark two assembler so mark two assemblers are built here they use the steppers and the, therefore the stepper has to be here and the, so was same with this uh, thresher mark two is also needing the pressure and needing this so it has to be sort of between these two so i'm not ever going to be using any of the mark one uh, threshers anymore as long as we have the mark two threshers we're going to put those in see it's not even built yet it's not even built yet but it is just awfully slow but this is the kind of the thing right it's it, everything here is is really really slow but it um it it gets the job done because once you pick up once you come in here and you want to build the new factory you pick up 50 thresh uh, 50 assemblers and that's probably going to be fine then moving forward we also have the miners and uh, the miners here and here isn't there one something about the threshers no yeah and then just moving further down the line and uh, we just have planters we have uh, all the 
all the monorail stuff and we also have some lights and just as i think about it i realized that we're actually missing some a thing here we're missing we don't really want those lights we can live without those didn't i forget the smelters yes i did i forgot the smelters yeah look at that so what if we just make the smelters now what if i do that one and then the very last one and we'll use this as an example of how to build it because i am never going to use those smelters here so i don't need a box so i could just put some of this in here and then use that as a as a box because if we're being honest then this one takes 10 limestone for two that means five limestone each that means this is 100 plus 100, 100, 100. this is going to be enough right and you always have enough limestone so that is a uh, very nice that means we need to get the smelters in here um i am going to build you here so one of the things that are coming inbound is already in then we need atlanta more and we need some uh, some processing units so we can start by removing this so we get a clean slate for building so first things first we look at the smelter and it we already have this uh, the miners coming or the limestone coming in and then we have the copper components i just need to find the copper components so i drag it from here and backwards that means i take this out and we go from here and back into this location and it's copper component like this it is this symbol to branch off the bus and it goes in so now we have all the stuff we need i don't really care if it's building at ratio well i don't care at all if it's built at ratio uh, here we have this one coming in and then we have the atlantum and we have the processing unit so atlantum is here and the processing unit is here so again that should be pretty simple there is one i think there's one one issue is there no there's no they just go up here so that's processing units and here I get just the Atlantum. Great. And I think that illustrates just how simple it is to set things up. So it's actually pretty fortunate that we did have a little bit of a of a miss here. And then you can see once this one builds the first one, and it says 10 Atlantum ingots and some advanced circuits, and then it just needs to go out into this location. Let's have a look. I want to see it working. And just as soon as the first one is working, excellent. And just unload it. Is it slow? It's a slow build. Anyway, so that just shows you how easy it is to do uh, branching off this kind of bus. Of course, it gets a little bit difficult when you're back here. It also gets a little bit annoying when someone put a giant limestone deposit. But luckily, uh, it was. this is just exactly the last thing we needed. And you could put, put balloon lights, but considering I have 200, uh, 501 balloon lights, I think I'm good for the rest of the game. So I think that is basically what I want to show you about this uh, bus. Of course, uh, Right, these ones, uh, since you can't limit them right now, then I'm limiting with the uh, limestone limits so that you can uh, you can just make sure that you don't overbuild things that you certainly don't want to build. You don't want to build... Okay, that even this is too many. This is way too many. So I'm just going to take you out. And we definitely do not want to build 100 of, uh, of monorails. I mean, we like monorails, but not that much. And this is particularly important for things that either stack really high or are very expensive, like this one. And then we also have the smelters. So that was what I wanted to show you with this uh, this bleacher bus. If you like it, you can uh, just copy it and put it in your own base. Uh, for patrons, I also have a save game. So if you want to tinker with it and just see if, uh, if, if you build it the same way or how I solved a particular problem, then uh, that is going to be uh, just available to patron supporters. So thank you very much to everyone who is supporting the, me on Patreon. And of course, if you want to see more, then let me know in the comment sections, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff. Come watch on uh, Twitch during the live streams because we have several other things. Just some of the things that I want to do is I want to uh, make uh, dedicated builds for some of these things with uh, high level threshers and all that stuff that builds a somewhat at ratio. I want to uh, make uh, a recycler of just seeing if I can get free resources in a non-abusive way by uh, by planters making kindle vine making limestone making uh, iron and copper and then see if we can sort of get sort of, sort of some kind of uh, uh, perpetual process going just for the fun of it and uh, yeah then whatever else comes up and maybe even we'll get more content for the game soon so thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it if you did you know the drill i'll see you next time until then take care and stay effective